for your kind introduction. Uh, I'm a too much American, but my heart is 100% pure Japanese. <laughs> so let me allow to speak my uh, poor English. Still, I'm not a, a native speaker. But I'm very happy to be here and honored to be here to talk about the SC Maghreb uh, deployment project in the United States and Japan. Uh, Annapolis is one of my favorite towns uh, to enjoy uh, fresh oysters and uh, Chesapeake Bay crabs at uh, Cantorad Inn and uh, Mike's uh, Crab House. That's my best, I think. <laughs> well, uh, GR Central uh, established Washington D.C. office in 2001, just after uh, September 11th, to promote our Shinkansen and uh, SC Maghreb pro uh, technology to federal government. Uh, to reinforce the U.S.-Japan alliance, not just a business purpose. So uh, today I'd like to show you an uh, outline of JL Central first and uh, uh, progress of SC Maghreb, and then uh, talk about uh, uh, deployment project in the United States and Japan. And finally, uh, I just want to touch uh, uh, relationship between uh, JL Central and the U.S. Navy. So uh, please uh, begin uh, uh, just a 10 minutes video to enhance your understanding about our uh, JL Central. <laughs> Mass transport that carries about 410,000 passengers a day. 
As such, it plays a vital role in Japan's social and economic development. The Tokaido Shinkansen share of the transportation market between Tokyo and Osaka is overwhelmingly superior to that of airlines at approximately 80%. The Tokaido Shinkansen is also world-renowned for its safety record and punctuality. It has not had a single passenger fatality or injury due to train accidents since its opening in 1964. The annual average delay per operational train is less than one minute, even including delays caused by natural disasters such as typhoons. The Shinkansen is a dedicated line on which only Shinkansen trains operate. The system is not shared by conventional lines or freight trains, and there are no level crossings, thereby eliminating collisions with other trains or road vehicles. The Tokaido Shinkansen employs a highly proven signal system called the ATC, the Automatic Train Control. The ATC displays speed limits in the driver's cabin in accordance with the distance between trains and automatically applies the brakes to slow down within speed limits if necessary in order to eliminate train collisions. Since collisions between trains can be avoided through use of a dedicated line and the ATC, Shinkansen rolling stock is made lighter, offering improved energy efficiency and frequent and high-speed service is realized. The Shinkansen employs an electric multiple unit or EMU system. Compared with the locomotive halt system like that seen on the French TGV, the EMU has the advantages of reduced noise, energy efficiency, and good acceleration and deceleration performance. This makes it best suited for the terrain between Tokyo and Osaka, which has many stations. Furthermore, because of its light axle load, the EMU can reduce track maintenance costs. The Shinkansen General Control Center in Tokyo maintains precise control over Tokaido and Sanyo Shinkansen operations. In the case of a disaster, control can be switched to a backup system. The second General Control Center located in Osaka. In 2013, JR Central commenced commercial operation of the N700A, which employs the fruit of JR Central's technological development since the Series N700. The N700A has a bulky vibration detection system that enables early detection of malfunctions, central fastening brake discs that enable better braking force, and cruise control systems that utilize ATC data to control speed. Train sets starting with the Series N700 have enabled an improvement in operation speed on curves through the employment of a body inclining system. They also offer comfortable cabins and realize great improvements in energy efficiency. Operation at a maximum speed from Tokyo to Shin-Osaka, the electric power consumption of the Series N700 and N700A is 25% less than that of the Series 300. Compared to other modes of transportation, railways are very efficient and environmentally friendly. For the Tokyo to Osaka route, the Shinkansen produces one twelfth of the CO2 emissions produced by airplanes. The Hamabatsu workshop plays an integral role in ensuring the safety of the trains, rigorously maintaining all Shinkansen rolling stock in tip-top condition. Personnel carry out maintenance along the length of the line. 
An average of 3,000 workers engage in maintenance work every night to maintain safety. Stable transport is based on careful maintenance work. Dr. Yellow is a multiple inspection train that efficiently inspects tracks and electrical facilities. Once every 10 days, Dr. Yellow makes careful inspections while traveling at speeds of 270 kilometers per hour. <coughs> The Tokaido Shinkansen Earthquake Rapid Alert System, Terras, is being introduced in addition to the 50 seismometers alongside railway lines. Terras determines the impact on the Shinkansen by measuring the amplitude increase of the initial T waves produced by an earthquake and automatically cuts off power transmitted to the Shinkansen from substations if the result exceeds standard values. It then immediately reduces the speed of the train before the main S waves reach the line to minimize damage from a large earthquake. In order to prevent a derailment during a huge earthquake as much as possible, derailment prevention guards are installed parallel to and on the inside of Tokaido Shinkansen rails in sections that are expected to experience strong earthquake motion during a major earthquake. for the renewal of facilities due to aging engineering structures, JR Central has started a large-scale renovation project for all tunnels, steel bridges, and concrete viaducts. This preventative maintenance aims to prolong the life of engineering structures by implementing countermeasures before problems arise. This project will largely reduce interference with train operation and costs associated with prolonging the life of the structures. Well, that is the explanation of the current Tokaido Shinkansen, and uh, we celebrated the uh, 50 years anniversary uh, in Tokyo uh, two weeks ago uh, with uh, Prime Minister Abe and uh, U.S. Ambassador Kennedy joined that. Uh, we're really proud of that. And next, I'd like to show you uh, uh, SC Maghreb. Uh, it's a three minutes uh, video. Uh, I think it's easy to understand the thing is believing for everybody. To continue operation of the high speed railway that leaves Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka, which is our mission and the company's lifeline, JR Central plans to build the Churu Shinkansen that employs superconducting maglev technology. As the current Tokaido Shinkansen quickly approaches its 50th anniversary, we feel it is necessary to make Japan's major transportation artery redundant to prepare for future structural aging and large-scale natural disasters. This is why JR Central plans to bear the complete cost of construction of the Chuo Shinkansen that utilizes superconducting maglev technology and operated along the Tokaido Shinkansen. Furthermore, in order to complete this plan while strictly maintaining the sound management and stable dividends, we will first build the Chuo Shinkansen between Tokyo and Nagoya and then quickly extend the line to Osaka. In May 2011, based on the discussions held at the Transport Policy Council, the Minister of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism designated JR Central to be the primary contractor and operating entity between Tokyo and Osaka. The Minister then decided on a plan and instructed JR Central to start construction. In response to this, JR Central is steadily moving forward with the Churo Shinkansen plan by conducting environmental assessments and clarifying the actual route and location of stations. The superconducting maglev technology employed with the Churo Shinkansen will enable ultra-high speeds of 500 kilometers per hour by utilizing the magnetic force produced between coils on the ground and superconducting magnets installed in rolling stock. Furthermore, since the train will be 
levitating 10 centimeters off the ground, it will have a high level of safety in regards to earthquakes when running at high speeds and also have superior acceleration performance. In July 2009, the Maglev Technological Practicality Evaluation Committee determined that superconducting Maglev technology has reached a level that does not hinder commercial operation. In December 2011, the Minister of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism adopted superconducting Maglev technological standards. We are currently conducting running tests using the new series L0 on the Yamanashi Maglev test line that has been extended from 18.4 kilometers to 42.8 kilometers. We are also in the midst of refining superconducting Maglev technology for practical application and making efforts to reduce costs. to provide society with a transportation system that is even safer, faster, and more comfortable. JR Central is Bound with Future. Okay, then uh, i go ahead to explain uh, uh, SC Margaret project in Japan first. Uh, this is a uh, SC Margaret project line between Tokyo and uh, Nagoya. It's a uh, 180 miles length route uh, with uh, six stations and the current Tokaido Shinkansen running on coastal area. That's facing a great earthquake risk. So that's why we are developing an uh, alternative line with uh, uh, cutting edge technology. As you saw at the video, uh, we invested a huge amount of money to invest uh, uh, to protect the uh, passenger from earthquake. But uh, who guarantees 100%? So that's a big headache. The Margaret project uh, to link Tokyo and Nagoya would be a uh, cost uh, 55 billion US dollars. It's a huge. But uh, it's a 100% urban no government money inside uh, because to show a leadership uh, how we should uh, go ahead quickly as, uh, as soon as quickly is a uh, first priority if they say it's a political issue that takes a long time we don't like that and uh, this is outline of SMA uh, Chuo Shinkansen project Chuo means the central region of Japan uh, 180 miles length for SC Maghreb, and the current Tokaido Shinkansen uh, a little bit uh, uh, longer than this. Uh, station would be six, and uh, three stations would be uh, underground. Because uh, Tokyo and Nagoya area is a highly densely populated area, uh, we have no land to build uh, a station on the ground. Uh, both track are double tracked, and uh, SC Magre has a U-shaped guideway. The travel time would be less than half of current Tokaido Shinkansen, and uh, we have uh, ten min every 10 minutes intervals of SC Magre with a high speed of 312 mile hour per hour. And the seat capacity is a little bit uh, uh, smaller than current Tokaido Shinkansen because uh, to reduce uh, air resistance, the vehicle of SC Magre is smaller than uh, Tokaido Shinkansen. And uh, ticket price, one way ticket price uh, from Tokyo to Nagoya would be up to just only seven dollars because there's uh, no friction on SC Maghreb. That's bring a huge reduction of operational cost. And we have no drivers on SC Maghreb. That's uh, also additional cost reduction. The building cost would be fifty-five dollar, uh, fifty-five mi uh, billion dollars. Uh, we have four billion dollars cash flow every year. That's enough to to build just on our power. No uh, political intervention. 
the getting rid of uh, political intervention is so important to push uh, this uh, long-term transportation project. And uh, we imagine the Maghreb line will be completed in 2027. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, Japanese government uh, gives us uh, a go-ahead sign to construct the SC Maghreb line uh, from uh, July, uh, January next year. Uh, this is a, uh, how Maghreb, SC Maghreb is, has a safety uh, against earthquake. It has uh, uh, four inches above uh, its guideway, its air gap. Compared with the German-based technology TransRapid, it has uh, only one centimeter air gap. So this is al already uh, in revenue service uh, in China uh, to link Shanghai Pudong Airport and the east end of Shanghai City. Uh, I think it's a 40 miles length route. But uh, you can look just 10 centimeters uh, air gap is not enough to, to uh, proof earthquake proof. If uh, also something happens, a uh, strong wind hit uh, body, it could be a disaster. So we don't like that. And next is uh, how SC Maghreb uh, has a uh, huge uh, acceleration and de uh, deceleration power. It takes uh, only 5.5 seven kilometers uh, until it's reached top speed, 500 kilometers. While current Shinkansen uh, N703s uh, need 14.4 kilometers uh, to reach uh, speed 300, while French TGB need 18.7 kilometers. Oh. This is not a good picture, it's a, <laughs> I'm copying, I, oh, okay. So this shows how uh, SC Maghreb has a superiority uh, to uh, German transrapid system. The reason why it's uh, German system is based on a conventional magnet, not a superconducting magnet. So uh, the difference between two systems is like a difference between human being and monkeys. Uh, this is data of Yamana CSC Maghreb test line. Uh, we have already accumula uh, accumulated travel distance. It's uh, about uh, land, land and a half trip uh, from Earth to Moon, and uh, more than uh, 140,000 people enjoyed our ride. The maximum speed we recorded in 2003 uh, was 363 miles per hour on the ground. Uh, this is uh, uh, next, uh, uh, maybe you may concern about this uh, uh, Maghreb development project we are now uh, challenging to bring our technology to here on Northeast Corridor. The 50-year story of Shinkansen is a story of determination and uh, unwavering commitment to excellence, all in effort to bring people a better quality of life and to ensure economy economic strength and vitality well into the future. Today it is our duty uh, to continue and expand upon that tradition, both in Japan and beyond. It is therefore a great honor for me to speak about a parallel effort to bring SC Maghreb to the United States. Uh, bringing SC Maghreb to the United States is undoubtedly a great task both in terms of its scope and in the many obstacles it will face. However, I would not be here speaking to you if I did not believe that it is both a worthy and achievable goal. Uh, of course, SC Maghreb is uh, somewhat unfamiliar technology to many Americans, uh, while some are aware that it exists in Japan. It is understandably difficult for them to appreciate how or why it would be built in the Northeast Corridor. I find it uh, quite compelling to point out uh, that, in fact, the Northeast Corridor is not so different from the Chuo Shinkansen Corridor. As you can see from this uh, simple illustration, uh, both corridors are comparable in these distances. 
225 miles length route versus 228, as well as the population 40 million versus 52 million. Similarly, both corridors having existing established passenger railway service. In case of Japan, this is of course the Tokaido Shinkansen. In the Northeast Corridor, it is the Amtrak Kasera. In both locations, these systems have essentially reached its maximum capacity. In the case of Acera on Northeast Corridor, the problem is further exacerbated by the mingling of various other passenger and freight rail system on the same track. It is remarkable to consider that the Northeast Corridor hosts not only Amtrak, but eight commuter trains and four freight railroad. It's perhaps unsurprising then that uh, Acera performance is only about 80%. It's uh, within 10 minutes arrival, not actual. I would also point out that uh, while it is considered a high-speed rail, the Acera's average operational speed is only slightly more than 80 miles per hour. Uh, apart from Acera's Rakshita reliability and the performance, uh, the economic and the social reason for rejecting the status in the Northeast, no, Northeast Corridor and investing in its future are compelling. The NEC, as it uh, commonly known, is uh, America's economic center. By most estimates, it accounts for 15% of uh, US GDP that make it uh, comparable in size of the GDP of the United Kingdom. One might therefore suppose that uh, its uh, infrastructure is modern, appropriately scaled, and well maintained. The unfortunate reality is that uh, the region's infrastructure is straining to keep pace with the rapid growth in population and ever increasing demand for efficient and reliable transportation. The corridor faces extraordinary congestion delays. Travelers waste nearly half a million gallons of gas and over 700,000 hours in lost time annually. Simply waiting in the gridlock or traffic that has become emblematic of the region's roadway. Flying is not much better. The region has five of top 10 airports with the greatest average delays in the entire country. Overall, a recent government report uh, cited 21 critical infrastructure needs that must be addressed simply to ensure reasonable and safe state of good repair for the corridor. <coughs> and the problem will only become worse over time. By some estimate, the region's population will grow by 14% in the next two decades from its current level of 40 million residents. The same time frame, intercity trip growth will increase by 45%. The cost of not addressing this demographic uh, trend is unacceptably high in terms of lost economic productivity. In order to meet the need of public and maintain a competitive edge in the international economy, the U.S. must, must take dramatic action. That is the uh, first phase of Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. ACMR project will uh, complement existing rail service with the corridor while offering passenger an ultra-fast alternative. At uh, speed up to 500 km per hour, the NEC SC Magrib will enable uh, express travel time between DC and New York less than one hour. By way of comparison, the current travel time from DC and New York is nearly three hours by Amtrak Kasera. Air travel is uh, similarly, uh, when we take into account the time required to get to the airport, and make one way through security. As a first step in the broader, broader project to connect to DC and New York, we are focusing on the long segment between Baltimore and Washington, DC, with an intermediate stop at the Baltimore-Washington International Airport. 
This is one of the densest and the most frequently traveled segment of the uh, Northeast Corridor. Once built, the Baltimore Washington SC Maori will demonstrate the transformational potential of this technology for the broader corridor and the nation. It will reduce the current travel time from about 40 to 15 minutes and will make BWI the most accessible international airport to both cities resident. Uh, we project uh, uh, to link DC and Baltimore with uh, three stations. Uh, travel time would be, uh, oh, that's not back, right? <laughs> Okay, yeah. And uh, the limit per train would be, uh, it's very small, over just uh, 200 uh, passengers. And uh, we project uh, the cost, construction cost to link DC and Baltimore would be a little bit higher than 10 billion US dollars. And the Japanese Prime Minister have al already offered President Obama, the Japanese government offered half of construction cost, $5 billion to the United States through Japanese uh, Bank of International Cooperation. Uh, I think it's uh, February last year. And uh, People will enjoy a vastly expanded uh, range of residential options that will now be within commuting distance to their workplaces. Our preliminary estimates suggest that over 230,000 jobs will be created during the construction of the initial phase between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. The project would, will add over $20 billion to GDP from construction itself and various multipliers that account for many industries that benefit indirectly. Once the system is running, up to about 12,000 jobs will be created from the system's operation and from the increased visitor spending that we are focusing in the region. At the same time, the SC Maori will take automobiles off the road and dramatically enhance the environmental. In fact, uh, we estimated that the project would result in about 2 million tons in reduced greenhouse gas emission. Well, uh, let me switch to the next theme. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk with uh, some photos that is uh, a relationship with the GR Central and the US Navy. Uh, this is the first picture uh, is of a concert held by U.S. Civil Fleet Jazz Band uh, called the Far East Band. This was taken right in front of the Nagoya Station on March uh, 2004. The band belonged to the USS Blue Ridge flagship of U.S. Uh, Civil Fleet. The U.S. Concept General in Nagoya wanted to strengthen the U.S.-Japan relationship uh, when the Blue Ridge first arrived in Nagoya port in 2004. He originally came up with the idea of sponsoring a concert in Nagoya, but the city rejected the idea due to security concerns. That is when an old friend of mine, uh, Lochman, consulted me. I asked my boss, uh, Mr. Kasai, uh, the CEO of JL Center at the time, for help. We quickly decided to accommodate Far East Band concert to the right place in front of Nagoya Station, one of the biggest station in central region of Japan. We are able to promptly overcome security concerns and over obtain all necessary approvals to allow the concert to proceed in front of Nagoya Station. We provided flowers and uh, flags of both countries to decorate the concert stage. About 3,000 Japanese people enjoyed the music and the entertainment provided by Far East Band. A concert was held again by the band in January of 2006. The commander of the U.S. Seventh Fleet at that time, Admiral uh, Jonathan Greenard, uh, currently chief of U.S. Uh, naval operation, graciously traveled all the way from Yokosuka to Nagoya on a bread train and expressed his gratitude for our company's support of the course. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, skipped. 
Uh, this is the picture when I invited some members from U.S. Uh, Marine, uh, Third Marine Expeditionary Force in Okinawa to uh, the previously mentioned Yamanashi SC Mangre test site. In 1995, there was a huge outcry against the U.S. military forces all over the Japan after three Marines were accused and convicted of raping 12 years old Japanese girl in Okinawa. Uh, following this tragic incident, Huge protests against uh, such an acceptable crime sprouted throughout Okinawa, and it became difficult for Japanese government to maintain its obligation under the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. However, a small private female group led by Ms. Kumiko Hashimoto, uh, wife of the Prime Minister Hashimoto, sprang in, uh, into action. This group established a welcome marine program uh, which provided Marines uh, with uh, various opportunities during a one-week period to learn uh, and understand the traditional Japanese culture and also learn about Japanese cutting-edge technology. One of the major objectives of the Welcome Marine program was to focus on Marines stationed in Okinawa to welcome them to Japanese society, provided them with a deep understanding of the Japanese culture and built mutual trust the Japanese people and the U.S. Marines. This program aimed at getting the Marines to experience cultural exchange with Japanese citizens from all walks of life to get a true understanding of Japan. As part of Welcome Marine program, I invited a group of Marines to our company for a chance to ride SC Magre, uh, which was still in its uh, infancy. It was a very special experience for the Marines, uh, as the uh, SC Maori was not and still not available to the general public. Today, with a few exceptions, the SC Maori is being used for test operations only. However, for the special three years window of opportunities from 2005 to 7, we had about 50 Marines every summer experience ride at the speed of up to 312 miles per hour. In the briefing before SC Magre ride, I always reinforced the fact that the U.S. military presence in Japan, including Okinawa, is contributing to peace and stability in East Asian region. And I also always expressed my appreciation for this very important presence. Uh, next uh, picture is shown uh, uh, accompanying the former U.S. ambassador to Japan, Tom Schiffer, and his wife, Suzanne Schiffer to the Tokaido Shinkansen driver's seat back in July of 2006. We have maintained a close relationship with Ambassador Schiffer through a collaboration with his home state, Texas, on a high-speed rail project between Dallas and Houston with our very new Shinkansen N700A in 19 minutes. I hope that the opportunity to be seated in the bread train's driver's seat was exciting for Ambassador and uh, have a positive impact in introducing a bread train to the state of Texas. Uh, this picture was taken at the Yamanashi SC Maghreb test facility when we invited staff and employees from the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo for a test run. We invited more than 100 embassy staff and their families for a trip to Yamanashi to experience the SC Maghreb test ride. It was uh, continuing to be our hope that uh, this experience had a great impact especially on the children, as they bear the key to the Japan-U.S. relationship in the future. Also, I wanted the children to experience how advanced public transportation system with a high level of technology development and combined and embedded in Japanese society. We have offered opportunities like these to groups from U.S. and the U.K., our allied countries, but we had to respectfully declined when China requested same opportunity to experience a test ride. The reason why we could not accommodate the Chinese request is because the superconnect Magre technology could be diverted to military field. Knowledge about the technology has potential use in developing SC catapult to launch fighter plane from aircraft carrier to launch intercontinental ballistic missiles and railguns. Due to the sensitivity of such highly specialized technology, we have no choice but to remain cautious when interacting with China for national security concern. 
We have not been able to accept a request from, for cooperation by Chinese government, uh, even for technical support, uh, even for uh, construction of the conventional high-speed rail in mainland China, except Taiwan. We had a review de report uh, about the lack of respect for the rule of law by Chinese government and the wrongful taking of variable intellectual property right. For this reason, we have not been forthcoming in working with China or providing any technical support, including uh, education and the training of railroad personnel. Uh, this picture is also from when uh, we took American uh, diplomat uh, and their family from U.S. Embassy Tokyo uh, to a bread train maintenance depot in the suburban area of Tokyo. Uh, maybe someone knows uh, him. Uh, this picture was taken in April 2007 when we invited the former commander U.S. Naval Forces Japan, Admiral James Kerry, and his wife Amy Kerry for a test riding at the Yamanashi SC Maghreb test facility. Afterward, we took them to our guest house at Lake Viva, where we enjoyed the karaoke all night long. <laughs> In return, Admiral Kerry kindly coordinated naval aircraft trip for me from uh, U.S. Naval Air Base Satsugi to the Iwo Jima in the fall 2007. I have not forgotten the magnificence of the FA-18 Hornet practicing the nighttime landing maneuver. That is because I had a unique opportunity to personally watch such a landing while standing right next to the runway. I heard that Admiral Kerry uh, is currently teaching at uh, U.S. Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. I am looking forward to seeing him uh, again in the near future. Uh, this picture was taken in May 2009. Uh, when some midshipman Japan study group from Annapolis came to Japan for educational tour and they inspected a bread train control center located in Tokyo Station. JR Central partnered with JR West uh, to communicate and control traffic all the way from Tokyo to Fukuoka, Kyushu Island, the southern part of Japan. All the uh, operators are able to share the real-time information through massive traffic operation panel. One participant commented that it reminded him of the U.S. Navy's operation center. Uh, this last one I would like to show you was taken in June of 2008 uh, when I invited a student from the Sullivan School located in the U.S. Naval Forces Yokosuka to our bread train car maintenance depot in Tokyo. In March 2008, there was an incident in which a U.S. seaman murdered a Japanese taxi driver in Yokosuka. During this period, several other incidents involving U.S. military personnel followed in succession throughout Japan. There was increasing tension between military-based localities and the U.S. military. Furthermore, the left-wing Japanese newspaper, uh, triggered by Asahi newspaper, spread excessively verified sentiment against the U.S. military forces in Japan. To prevent the situation getting from getting worse, the CNFJ instructed the U.S. naval forces in Yokosuka that leaving base premises was prohibited. I thought that the criminals should be punished uh, appropriately by Japanese law. However, I also thought that it was uh, detrimental uh, for both countries to cause the U.S. naval forces and the Japanese society to become entirely segregated due to wrongful behavior by a few individuals. Then I got permission from CNFJ to take the American children who were prohibited from leaving the base out for a half-day excursion tour to see a bread train and a multi-purpose inspection train called the Dr. Yellow, which is almost never accessible from public. We arranged both bread train and the Dr. Yellow on the pool track at the car maintenance depot and took pictures of all kids seated on the Shinkansen driver's seat. The children from Sullivan School were ecstatic about the tours since they rarely had any chance to ride bullet train, let alone sit in the driver's seat. I couldn't help but uh, to tear up reading the thank you letters that were delivered me a week later. Japan and the U.S. are sharing common values, democracy, human rights, rule of law, and the free market. Although we are 
we have been involved in a major war against uh, each other in the past. Uh, we are able to overcome that tragedy and now respect each other's national interest and continue making great progress with the bilateral relationship. It's true that the political and the private business relationship create bridges to build a strong Japan-US relationship. But equally important is the individual relationship among citizens. Person-to-person, face-to-face relationship interweaved in many different layers and the diverse way also constitute the true connection. I plan on continuing to do the best I can as an individual citizen to make small contribution toward deepening mutual understanding and trust between the two, ne two countries. I sincerely hope that you midshipmen play an active role to further the Japan-US relationship in near future and looking forward to see you in Japan. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we're literally running out of time, but before we, uh, we uh, uh, end the session, I'd like to uh, present Mr. Ichikawa with this uh, gift on behalf of uh, Center for Regional Studies, uh, who's director Mark Reese is here, and also uh, uh, Mr. Keith Himmer, mm -hmm and uh, Commander uh, Murakoshi uh, I am here. for his uh, no. uh, incredible effort to corral mission right here. Uh, and uh, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. And also, <laughs> today is election day, and yes. we're electing the governor. And uh, forget all the candidates. Go to the polling station if you haven't voted. Write in the name Ichigawa. <laughs> this is going to bring us a fast train. <laughs> and uh, no nonsense. And he can build, uh, provide half of the cost for this. Um, thank you very much. And uh, so ne next week, next Wednesday, we'll have a speaker uh, who will be talking about the uh, advent of internet on the Chinese language and Chinese studies. So, look out. Thank you. Thank you for coming.